Hey guys, today I want to talk about a few different measuring tools that you're going to find in the woodworking shop, as well as some helpful tips to help you measure your workpiece accurately. So as you can see here, I have three different measuring tapes and two different tri-squares. Now, all of these measuring tools come in different sizes. For example, you can see here I have a 25 foot measuring tape, a 16 foot measuring tape, and a 10 foot measuring tape. Now those numbers are telling me the max distance that these tools or these measuring tapes can measure. Same goes for these uh, tri-squares over here. For example, this is a smaller version of a, of a square, but if you have a large carpentry square, it's gonna be much bigger, maybe even two foot long. And you can also find smaller versions of these as well for a really fine measuring. So let's take a look at some of the differences between these three measuring tapes. So like I said, this one's our largest one, and it's at 25 feet. So when I pull this out here, you'll notice that you can see the big numbers, which mark the inches, and then once I get to feet, it also tells me how many feet I'm at. So there's one foot, and when I get to two feet, it'll tell me two feet, so on and so forth. Here, they highlighted 16 to make it easy to see because that's a common measurement used in woodworking. For example, studs tend to be 16 inches on center, meaning from the center of the beginning of the tape to the center of the 16 mark. That's how far away the um, studs are usually placed. What you don't see here is any numbers by the ticks. So on a measuring tape like this, I just need to know by looking at these ticks what they are. So I'm gonna show on the screen how to read those ticks, and you can always pause this video and refer back to it. It's also posted on Canvas. But those ticks are something that we need to memorize just by looking at them. Now some measuring tapes, like this one, this is my 10 foot tape, they do have the inches noted. As well, on these tiny little numbers, they have the marks noted. So they do sell measuring tapes like this, but they're not as common. And lastly, on this 16 foot measuring tape here, you'll notice I do have my inches noted on the top, but here on the bottom, it's something totally different. And what this is doing is it's telling me inches on top and centimeters on bottom. So we need to be very careful not to accidentally read the centimeter measurement when we're trying to get an inch measurement, because the numbers will be totally different. For example, here at two inches, it reads as just over five centimeters. So two inches versus five inches, if you thought you were marking inches, is a much uh, different measurement. Something else I want to point out is on all these measuring tapes, you'll see this end piece moves. And that's so you can measure inside and outside measurements. For example, if I hook this piece of wood here from the outside, that piece is gonna move the same width that width is the thickness of this metal piece. So it's gonna move that thickness so that zero starts from the inside of it. And if I'm trying to measure from, let's say the end of this block here to the end of the board, I can push it up against it and now zero is moved to the outside of this piece. So that's why this moves. It's actually moving where zero starts. Now this one is really worn. There's a lot more movement in there than it should be. You wanna be careful when you're doing this and you wanna make sure when you close your measuring tape, you don't let it slam shut because that's gonna slowly wear that down and you're gonna be, this one looks like it could be at least a 16th or maybe even an eighth inch off. So when you close it, make sure it closes um, slowly so that you're not hurting this measuring piece because that's actually where your zero is. That's where your measuring starts. But it had, it's the same measurement uh, technique on all of these. All of these pieces will move on all your measuring tapes. So just wanna make sure that it's not closing more than a few inches or so uh, certainly not way out here and then slam you back in because over time it's really going to wear that metal piece down. So another thing I want to talk about is using the right pen or pencil or marking tool to get the desired accuracy that you're looking for. So here I have three different pencils. I have your typical mechanical pencil, a standard number two pencil, and this one is a thick carpentry pencil. As you can see here, the 
tops of the lid are much different sizes. Kind of a small, medium, large. So when I'm marking this wood here, if I want a thick line, I can use my carpentry. The next one will be a little thinner. If I want a really fine line, I can use my mechanical. Now, the line thickness isn't so as important, so important as when I'm using it something like with this square here to make a mark. So if I take this square and I use these edges here to hook it on the side of the wood, if I use a, a large pencil such as this carpentry pencil, you can see in the video there's an actually a fairly substantial gap between the tool and my mark. I'm about a sixteenth of an inch off at least. And that's because of how thick this pencil is. It can't get all the way in that corner, it's too big. If I use a slightly smaller pencil, I can get better. So that one's really close and I'd probably be happy with that in most, most cases. But if I really want to get accurate, I can use a mechanical pencil or a really fine lead pencil and get pretty much right on it. So I know that might be hard to see with the camera, but my mechanical pencil, you can, I can almost hardly see it from where I am. I can see the smallest gap between my number two pencil and the tool, and then there's a big gap between my carpentry pencil and the tool. So you just want to keep that in mind. When you're marking something, you want to get all the way in the corner so you have the, as accurate as measurement as possible. Now, the one bad thing about a mechanical pencil, while it does give you an accurate mark, the lead tends to break really easy. So you do want to be cautious of that too, especially on rough wood. If you're marking rough wood, it tends to be better to use a pencil like this that is nice and sturdy and won't break. Another use for tools like these is to check to see if your piece is true and square, meaning that all four edges, um, sides, faces, whatever you're trying to measure, is square to the other sides and faces and edges. So for example, I'm going to use this one. If I line this up on this edge, and I put my finger on the on the rule here to make sure it stays flat, I can slide it all the way over, and I can see that this edge follows it perfectly. But if I measure this edge the same way and go up here, right here it touches, but right here I have the smallest little gap. So I know that this face, or this edge, is not truly perpendicular to this edge. Because this tool is a perfect 90 degrees, so if it's not perfectly flat against both edges, then that edge isn't true. Now I can test that by going to this other side and doing the same thing. And this will be hard to see on the camera, but actually I'm overhanging the rule on this edge. So that edge isn't square to either one of these faces or uh, edges. If I measure this one here, this is true. So based on um, Using this tool, I can tell that the bottom edge and the sides edge, side edges are square to each other, and this cut here was not made at a perfect 90 degrees. So that's something I can fix now rather than later. The same concept works fine with something like this too. A lot of times, you'll see this tool being used to mark an edge just like I showed you before. So if I want to carry a mark down, you know, if I, uh, let's say I take my measuring tape here, and I mark it at three inches. I can carry that mark down by using a square like this. Now, again, if I do that without fixing this edge, then that those two measurements won't be perfectly uh, parallel. These two lines won't be parallel. So you always need to fix your cuts first. So now I'd like to take a second to talk about something called the parallax effect. So here I have my setup. I have a, a little bit of tape on the end of my measuring tape here just to hold it down for me while I hold the camera. And I have a mark here at six inches. Now, if you watch this, you look at that mark. When I tilt the camera to the left here, I can make it read almost like it looks like six and an eighth. If I tilt my camera back this direction, I can make it look like it's five and seven eighths. I need to make sure when I'm marking, I'm always directly above the mark 
And honestly, it, it helps to look with your dominant eye. So I'm right-handed. When I mark something and I want to get in a really accurate mark, I tend to close my left eye and only look with my right eye directly above, just as you are now. That's going to be the most accurate way. Because again, if I'm looking a little to the side, either way, I might mark it inaccurately. So if I'm holding, if I'm looking this way and I want to mark it at six inches, well, that looks like something over there. But I know that's not right because when I look at the top, I'm a whole eighth inch off. So you need to be mindful of that when you're marking your woodworking pieces.